The big knock on the West Wing is that it's ruined politics, that it has poisoned people's minds to expect that the great problems of American life can be solved with a great speech, with Jed Bartlett standing up and saying, I'll tell you how it is. The re reality on the show is that they lose more often than they win, though. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and so part of the show is about, uh, I think, sort of realizing the limits of presidential power. And, and so I think that's something I, I try to emphasize in my work a little mm -hmm. bit, that this is not just about uh, the presidency being able to do all, the great speakers and orators and all that, although it might be why people get into politics, perhaps. Is that a bad thing? I'm not sure. Uh, but um, certainly, I think it's, it's more realistic in that sense than it's given credit for, typically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would just say to kind of to kind of jump on that and, and challenge that that's that argument about about the West Wing. I actually think the West Wing uh, was a was a sober show in the sense that uh, Jed Bartlett, the way I interpreted him, he was certainly an idealist, an idealist. But part of what made the show compelling is he was also pragmatic, and it showed the wrestling with the staff over issues and questions. And the other big break in. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the experts and the academics will know this better than me, but I think one of the things that was very pathbreaking about West Wing was the role it had in depicting the staff. Mm -hmm. uh, historically, shows about presidents was, you know, one, one person, usually one man, like out in front is the hero who saves everything, and that was how a lot of people had consumed history. The West Wing was one of these one of the first shows that tried to go behind the scenes of that and show the team that supports a leader, mm 